We're going to move on to an absolute beginner, now, once <laughs> in a lifetime, your chance to cruise uh, around Australia and New Zealand. And it's in five-star luxury with Holland America. Keith, you've been on lots of ships recently, haven't you? I you, know. were with, you were on board Holland America, weren't you? I was, yeah. uh, recently. And uh, I must admit, I, I love Holland America for many reasons. You know, it's premium class, Sean, but it's not pretentious. Um, it's elite without being you know, overly expensive. It really, really is lovely. And they give more space per guest than oh, any other cruise line. This is beautiful. It really is beautiful. Yeah. 137 years they've been cruising, they've been taking people around the world. Uh, their big trump card that I love is the on location, which is to do with their entertainment. That when you visit the ports, um, they bring on local entertainment. They tailor their entertainment product, as well as the dining, the food in the dining room, to the ports of call. So you get a really uh, beautiful experience of the cultures that you're visiting, not just when you're off on the tours, when you're walking around. Um, the, their ships are like pieces of artwork. They spend millions on these ships. And so you get wonderful self-guided iPod tours. You pick them up from reception, you can wander around, and it will tell you what's going on. They provide gentlemen hosts if you like to have a dance in the evening, and maybe your husband doesn't, or you're a solo traveler. Um, this particular ship was launched in 2003. And what I love about this is there's only just under 2,000 guests, but 82,000 tons. So again, all that space for you to enjoy, to go and see great shows like this. Remember, all your foods included. They've got a great uh, pinnacle bar, uh, which is beautiful and does lots of lovely steak and seafood for you to enjoy. Um, and on top of that, in the diet, once you get into the actual rooms themselves, you're talking about 100% cotton, uh, Egyptian cotton sheets, oh. massage ha shower heads that really give you a beauty. You know those lovely shower oh, really got pummel the. <laughs> I can almost relax as I feel it, you know what I mean? I don't know why I'm doing <laughs> that on the shower. Know. That's, that's what I do in the shower. <laughs> you know. It's a great movie, Keith. <laughs> um, now, uh, let's uh, show you um, this outstanding action. It's one of the finest we've ever seen, actually. We're going to fly you over to uh, Sydney. Uh, and we're going to give you two nights there in a hand picked hotel, aren't we? Yeah, you know, many of my, my seafaring compatriots would say this is the most beautiful harbour in the world. Um, it's certainly, definitely up there in my top three. I absolutely love it. And again, the great thing about Sydney is that national parks ring the city and penetrate right into its heart. This really is a city that shares its buildings with nature. Um, large chunks of the harbour itself are still edged with bush, uh, and parks themselves cut their way through the skyscrapers and suburbs. You're getting an idea of it now. The Sydney Harbour Bridge, of course, is iconic. Um, called the coat hanger by locals uh, and it's uh, it's absolutely amazing. It's the world's widest longest uh, spanning bridge and tallest steel arch bridge. Walking along it is definitely something you must do. Darling Harbour, I've had a lovely couple of, couple of steaks there with some friends. I recommend it. It's got a great aquarium as well. For me, it's all about the beach life, all about the marine life. And the best way to experience that, I believe, is to walk from Bondi Beach, which you'll know of, um, all the way through to Coogee Beach. There's a wonderful cliff top walk that you can do and you can call in at these beautiful little beaches on the way. You can even do it as a run. That's how I did it. But if you don't want to be that energetic. And of course, you've got the wine. You've got so much good wine in Australia. Uh, you can head out um, to these fantastic wineries uh, around New South Wales, uh, these lush forests and these stunning waterfalls. I mean, I'm excited already, and this is just your first couple of days of this 21 spectacular trip. And the food, Sean, the food, the coffee. Oh, honestly, you'd never. You have, I've never. Been, I've not been to uh, Australia or New Zealand, so I'd love to do this one. Uh, anyway, you've, you're transferred to a port, of course, and then you've got the most incredible 14-night cruise, and uh, we've got a day at sea, and then over to Melbourne. Yeah, this is a sophisticated, slick, and bohemian city full of character-filled neighbourhoods. It produces some of the best art, music, and culture, and cuisine, and um, performance and design ideas throughout the entire world. Uh, and it's a great chance for you to step back to the America's Gold Rush day. Or, or take the puffing billy train. Then you've got a relaxing day at sea. Then you're heading out. Oh, this is a cracker. This is Tasmania, Hobart, uh, the capital. And it's a fine deep water port. Uh, and it spills over into the lower reaches of the Durban Valley. Mount Wellington towers in the background. Uh, and much of the heritage of the city is on this historic waterfront. It really is beautiful. Um, beyond that, you can head out to the Mount Field National Park and the Russell Falls. Uh, that is a, definitely a good trip uh, to, to, to look to do. Or head out uh, to the Bonnelong Conservation Park. This is a lovely sanctuary dedicated to rehabilitating and releasing Tasmania's injured and orphaned animals. And you'll see kangaroos, uh, you'll see Tasmanian devils, that you can only see of course in this part of the world, koala bears, wombats, wallabies, golden possums, an amazing experience for you God. to do. And then of course Port Arthur, which is Australia's largest penal colony. Uh, and this is where 12,000 British convicts once marched through the gates and it's now an UNESCO heritage site and you can really step back into time of the heritage and ancient history of Australia here. Now, we've, uh, we've got a couple of days at sea next time. Yeah, we and do. And again, just enjoy the great weather, enjoy that beautiful ship. 
And I... then Milford Sound and Fiordland National Park cruising, Sean. This is great. This is cruising through cliffs that soar nearly a mile above the surface. Milford Sound cuts into the heart of the Southern Alps. Rainforest clings to the cliffs. These graceful waterfalls plummet into the void. It really is stunning. From there, you're hitting Port Chambers. Uh, sorry, Chambers, Chalmers. Put my teeth back in. <laughs> and this is perched on the hills high above New Zealand's loveliest harbour, uh, Dunedin. And it's a Kiwi city with a Scottish heart, hailed as the Edinburgh of New Zealand. You might even get a Piper's Welcome, and New Zealand's only kilt maker, Whiskey Distillery, is here. Um, really, really wonderful. From there, you're heading out to Akarua. And this is on the eastern shores of New Zealand's southern island. And it's a slice of France this time, sitting in the shadow of the snow capped southern Alps. Secluded beaches, quaint boutiques, and a harbour full of rare Hector dolphins, which are stunning. Uh, then you go to Picton. This is your gateway to the South Island's famed Marlborough district. And this goes right way back to 1985 where the Cloudy Bay uh, first produced uh, and released their Sauvignon Blanc. And that put New Zealand on the map for white wine. And that's where you can go and enjoy some wonderful wine tasting of the whole Marlborough region from Picton. From there you're heading out to Wellington. And this is New Zealand's capital. It offers stunning views of forested peninsulas, dramatic cliffside homes of Victoria buildings. And this is where you do your Lord of the Rings tour. Um, from there, Napier, and this is with the Hawke's Bay, uh, and again, you get a wonderful idea of some of the, this is, this is the premier place to live, really, in New Zealand, uh, and you get some of the oldest wine-growing regions and a superb Mediterranean climate and golden sand beaches. From there, Taruga, uh, this is a world-famous Bay of Plenty, named by James Cook, uh, Captain James Cook, of course, who landed here in 1769. Uh, and this is your main chance to go out to, to Rotorua. This is New Zealand's primary tourist attraction. Uh, it's about 90 minutes from where you dock and a wonderful chance for you to see the Rainbow Springs and do a skyline ride above this wonderful Maori paradise and ancient city. Um, from there, you're heading out to Auckland and this is where you're going to disembark uh, and transfer to a hotel for a two-night stay. We've included not only here, but a wonderful free tour, Sean. And this is a very exciting tour right here. Kate. It is, yes. Uh, this is the Rangitito Island Volcanic Explorer Tour. And this sits majestically just off the Auckland coast. It's a 600-year-old volcano, uh, wonderful rugged lava crops, native bush and sandy coves. And you're going to get a chance to have a four-wheel drive ferry. First of all, ferry over and then a four-wheel drive um, up to the base. And then you'll walk up and it gives you amazing views over the whole of the bay and, of course, of Auckland itself. Beyond that... Uh, it's got an amazing harbour bridge, it's got a fantastic aquarium. I could go on and on and on, but we're yeah. running out of time. But Auckland are, is a magical place. If you need to know any more information, our uh, cruise consult consultants are ready to take your call. Don't forget on that free phone number. That one took my breath away, I tell you. Um, now, let's just remind you of this stunning ship that you're going to be on board visiting these exquisite ports. I mean, this is, it is a trip of life. So I can't believe how low that price is, Keith. When you look at what's included, all of the extra stays, of course, in uh, Sydney and, of course, in Auckland, and you get the tour included. It's a, it's a three-week three exploration of New Zealand, Australia, Sean. And ev ev everything's taken care of. All you've got to do is wake up in a new place every day. What do you think your flights would cost alone, Keith, as well? Up to that part of the world. Very, my friend's just flown over. It cost over £1,000 just to fly over from Australia. Just the flight alone. Um, now, just to remind you, everything there is included in that price. Um, I was just looking at what you'd pay for an ocean view or a veranda, actually, and the prices are really good. I mean, the ocean view there on the 20th of October, just £100 more. And, you, you know, you are going to be out on deck so much, so having your own room with a view would be spectacular. And actually, the veranda, yeah, really good price well, for that as well. Excursion that's wise, the dream. isn't it? <laughs> um, don't forget, we can offer excursions through Planet Cruise at a fraction of the price. You can see the Sydney Hill Browse tour there from just £29 per person, and Auckland Discovery from £58 per person. And uh, so, if you want to book any excursions, then, then just ask our call centre or visit our website, of course.